think from the first moment I brought her home, definitely it was true love. But she had energy from day one. Early walker, early talker, energy. It was all, it was just like one of those moments. It was just like, oh my gosh, she's mine. There's always something special about her. If I would sum up mine and Lisa's relationship, it would be a uh, family bond. Her family to her was anybody that she cared about, anybody that she uh, reached out to, it was her family. It would only take one time in meeting her. There are always certain people that have uh, this magnetism and charisma that you can spot right away. She was always welcoming to everybody. Um, just a great person all around. I mean, it's hard just to pick one thing. The thing that made her such an awesome person is her personality, definitely. She had the ability to walk into a room and light it up, light it on fire. If you met her once, you loved her. There was no doubt about it. When I think about Lisa, the first thing I think of is uh, tough love. Uh, she was always there when I needed her in, in bad times and good, and, and she didn't hold her tongue, you know? And at the same time, she could just she didn't even have to say, you just knew how much she loved you. If there's one word that kind of personifies Lisa, it's caring. She just knew how to make everyone feel feel good. She, she definitely knew how to make everyone feel the way they wanted to feel. Comforting. Uh, diva. She might kill me. She might really wouldn't kill me for that one. Um, and I would say energetic. And I'll add a fourth one. Uh, brutally honest. I miss having my, my big sister. She was my little sister, but she was always there to ground me. She was kind of like my second mother rather than big sister. She really had this way about her that, that made you feel really comfortable and, and really, really loved. She was, you know, 11 years my younger and just being able to see her grow up and be there for all her special moments in her life. Whenever I needed it to be cheered up, and I would know whenever she needed to be cheered up and she was going through challenges. So we always had a special bond that, uh, that only we had because we went through those challenges together. If I were to sum up Lisa in a few words, she was so goofy and so much fun to be around. Lisa nourished us. I won't erase that date from my mind sometimes, but you, you just can't, it was June 2008. Um, and they told us that it was ovarian cancer and we didn't want to believe it. You just you just don't want to believe that because you don't want to hear that your your 20 year old has cancer, let alone ovarian cancer, which is so uncommon in young women that right away my first instinct was, it's not good. I was shocked. I mean, you never think that it's gonna to happen to one of your family members. We just kept getting hit with one bad result after another where it spread to another major organ, it spread to the brain, it, uh, you know, it was continuing to get worse. And regardless of how bad the news was, Lisa kind of took it in stride and had unbelievable courage and fortitude and just really was caring more about how it was impacting us than it was going to impact her. She took charge and said, this is what we're going to do. This is what's going to happen. Lisa's strength was totally 
remarkable, and I, I believe that it got stronger as she got sicker. We would have never thought at that age that it could even be possible for someone that young to come up with ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer, especially with young women, they don't see themselves um, vulnerable to this kind of cancer. When she left us, she left us with a gift. In this journal, she said, just help people going through the treatment who don't have family, who don't have anything. Give them the comfort that I had. She wanted young girls to know their bodies and to be their own advocate and speak out. So with us finding her journal, I think the mission just came into play with, this is what she wanted. She said it in her journal. She wanted to make comfort, to bring comfort to all cancer patients. Lisa's army started as a kind of an outgrowth of the number of people that she touched and cared about her because she cared so much about them. The foundation started based on reading Lisa's journal and trying to fulfill her wishes. She knew the reality of her situation and she wanted to help the reality of everyone else's situation. What sets Lisa's army apart from other similar organizations is first and foremost love. I think what makes Lisa's Army such a unique organization, which drew me to get involved, was the fact that it really uh, deals with people on the most human of levels. I mean, the thing about cancer is that it, it doesn't matter how old you are. It's something that can affect anybody and everybody. I had no idea about ovarian cancer before Lisa. Being 24 is such a young age to have ovarian cancer. Most of my patients are in their 50s, 60s, and 70s. So Lisa's army, I think, is taking on a very different mission. While there's so many worthwhile and good causes out there, what I think makes Lisa's army truly unique is the fact that it, it fills a void in terms of helping people who are actually going through the experience. It's taking on a mission of comfort, whereas most foundations look at trying to raise money for research or for education. We give patient comfort bags, comfort treatment bags, and that's everything Lisa uh, carried with her. It helps them go through chemo and the stuff like that. It makes them feel better. And within our treatment comfort bags, it's everything that Lisa carried with her to chemo treatment, and that's a homemade blanket, a comfy socks, lotion, hand sanitizer. Uh, one of the big things Lisa, we couldn't leave the house without was either her Kindle or her iPad. So now we're incorporating in our bag as a Kindle to everyone because when you're there, you're there for hours. And you want to not focus on your IV or your surrounding things. So we felt that why not offer this level of comfort to patients. I remember giving one of these bags to one of my patients and she just was so appreciative of the bag itself and everything that was in it. Which every, with every bag I give, it's like I'm giving a part of Lisa to them. And that way, some of the patients feel the love that we felt. I think there's a tremendous need for the area that Lisa's Army fills. We do a lot now here in the Philadelphia region. Certainly there's nothing that can stop us from growing and doing more beyond the, our, our region. Part of Lisa's legacy is to communicate to young women that this can happen to you. Her main goal for me was to educate young women that are my age and to go out and spread the word. The amount of pe people that we've reached is amazing to me. Even though our organization is still very young, uh, we have a very large social following and presence. I think that our social media accounts have been nothing but positive and it's increasing our awareness and actually getting more volunteers. As a part of the fundraising team, we started out by focusing towards younger people. The anchoring event will be the beach party. I love the beach party because it, it raises money to find a cure for not just ovarian cancer, any kind of cancer. Every event we have is getting larger and larger. That speaks volumes as to, uh, to what we're doing and the cause that we're fighting. We have the ability to, to, to move with the times, to change, and tackle it head on, whatever the challenge may be. We can take our experiences and help other people based on what Lisa wrote and what Lisa told us about her experience. 
She inspired us every day, Marie and I. She inspired all of our family. She inspired anybody that came into contact with her. That's why it truly is an army of people that she inspired that's making up Lisa's army. I definitely feel that her spirit is in everything that we do, from different events to every comfort bag that's given. It's her dream. I really hope to make this a national mission that we can help women and men all over the country. I would love to see this organization grow to worldwide. And if it's every person that we give a comfort bag to, it's like filling the heart. And if our heart is filled, and it overflows, then we've done our job. I love Lisa Army. The thing that makes me most proud is when I when we hold our meetings and I look around and I see how focused people are on on one goal and, and that, that goal was my sister's. Couldn't be more proud of her and the legacy that she left behind. My hope is that Lisa's life would kind of extend beyond this circle and truly create an army of people that will support other people in their time of need. She'll always be here, you know, because a part of her is him. I've kind of asked for a more compassionate daughter, a beautiful daughter, inside and out. And um, that's what she's left me with, just the beauty of life.